Hey there friends, I'm Leo and today I'm going to remake the first game I ever made using the Unreal Engine 5 Early Access. You know, it's funny, I had this page on my itch.io that is private called My First Game Ever Backup and I knew that someday I would try to remake the great growing Zorg. The first time I made this game it was just me and two guys working on it over the course of a weekend. So this time I also wanted to make it consistent and also make the game from start to finish in a weekend. So just like two or mostly three days. You know, I even forgot the game mechanics so I had to replay it to know what I did the first time around. Okay, so apparently I have to click and drag and this is going to change the potion why the hell do I gotta be the red slime to counter the scientist with just a butter knife this doesn't make any sense it took me a while to understand the combinations and what I gotta do and that's around the time where I figured out that best Leo left a button that explains everything you gotta do on the main menu and clicking this button open up a Bible so I'd rather understand the game by trial and error than having to read through all of this text. The story of Growing Zorg is that you are a slime type creature that is made in a lab. The game starts with you escaping, leading to lots of security measures on the facility to activate. And then you play the game by dragging different potions that change the form of your slime to counter each defensive measure in the facility. So red for scientist, green for the army dude, purple for the ground robot and blue for the flying helicopter? Oh, and the game is also an endless runner, with you scoring points the longer that you stay alive. So with that, I started developing the new version of the Growing Zorg. The first thing I started working on was the player models. The idea here is that I would make four variations of the player that you can switch as you go throughout the game. I was a little bit conflicted because how the hell am I supposed to do a realistic slime? Especially with the goofy ass helmet and even the weird wings on the purple slime. The answer is... I don't. I found a really good starting point using this slime shader that I found on YouTube. I added a couple of things to this material depending on the slime version. For example, the red one, it has some lava flowing through it and I used an emissive value using an alpha map. The characters also needed some very basic animation. So I quickly added some bones and made them look like they are always moving forward. After finishing all of the versions of the slime, I added the logic of the player itself. Instead of having to click and drag potions everywhere to just change the form of the player, you simply have to press a key on your keyboard. And then there's going to be a little animation of the potion being thrown at the slime. After this animation is done, it will spawn a particle effect depending on which type of slime you chose as well as a sound effect. For the little potion rotating animation, I simply made the same technique that I did on SparkMods, my main game, where I make it look like it is a 3D object rotating, but it is in fact just some sprite sheets that is in a material. The player will also take care of adding speed the more time you stay alive, and that is also going to be used on the score system that I'm going to add later. So now that we have remade the player models, let's remake the enemies. For the human characters, I use the epic MetaHuman Creator that allows you to make very quickly characters to use in engine. I also did some extra adjustments to the characters like the camo clothing and helmet for the army soldier. The idea here is that instead of the soldier holding a gun like he did on the original game, he's going to have a big ass shield with some meaty spikes on it just so that it makes more sense because if the green slime has some shields and a, a little helmet, it would make sense that this slime would be the only one that would be able to go through the guard, I guess. I know it's kind of funky, but it will have to do. With that idea, I made the big ass shield in Blender. Yes, I know, this looks like the most realistic thing you've ever seen in your entire life. Oh, and what about the material? It totally didn't just look like a thrown in a smart material from Substance and hope for the best. 
totally. I also made my very own skeleton so that I can add some extra poses to the characters, like for example the guard holding up the shield to try and contain or detain the slime. That didn't work out that smoothly, I will probably need to change a few settings in the metahuman retargeting poses, but it is going to do for now. For the scientist, I used an animation from a free pack that Epic provides that just give you some poses to use with guns. Now bear with me, why the hell would the, the lava slime be required against a random guy that is holding a knife? Why do you even need the lava slime for that? Doesn't make any sense, right? So what if the scientist guy has a kind of a cryogenic weapon that is supposed to throw in some liquid nitrogen into the enemy slime? So I got the cryo cannon from my main game and I imported that in. Combined with the animation and some particle effects, it ended up looking like it makes sense. Kinda, I guess. Now, for the robot enemies, I quickly made some models in Blender, changing a few things to just make a little bit more sense. Like, the weird helicopter thing is now a drone. And with that, we have finished the enemy models. Later down the road, I also created an enemy spawner actor that just cycles through the available enemies and spawns them with a random distance. I also made an enemy component that is going to detect what type of slime the player is when colliding and either do a game over to the player or kill the enemy. And now that we have all of this working, it is time to set up level generation. I started off making the procedural generation manager, and this guy here is going to spawn more tracks from a pool of random pieces of a map right in front of the player. Each one of these pieces I'm going to be calling a node. After the player passes through a node, it is going to delete the node the player just passed through and is going to add another one right in front of the player. I then made a single node actor, which would take care of containing all of the environment inside of itself, and this guy here gets spawned by the manager. To be able to link these nodes together, despite of the different sizes they might have, I added two nav links called start point and end point inside the individual node. These links are going to serve to connect the end point of one node to the starting point of another one, kind of snapping them together. Now all I gotta do is make a lot of children from this node actor right here, and I'm going to be able to make a bunch of different variations of the track and have a very procedurally generated kind of track that is an endless runner for the game. To set up the environment itself, I first had a look at the available assets that I had in my library, and luckily I had the perfect science laboratory pack already in there.
At this point, I started running out of time, it was already Sunday, so I only made one variation of the node. Yeah, sounds like all of that random node generation was kind of pointless now, but I will use their generator to make the first ever node different than the other ones that are going to be generated afterwards. So for that, I made a separate node called starting node, and this guy is going to have a cinematic actor. The way this works is that the cinematic actor is going to fade in the camera and move it along a spline, queuing up an explosion and the actual start for the game. I also imagine that this area is going to be full of scientists just working on those computers over there, and then cowering in fear once the glass breaks. Another thing that I added are these blinking lights that are going to rotate every two seconds or so, just to give a better feel for the environment. So now that we have an environment, players and all of the logic and the enemies, let's make some menus and really tie this up together. I first started off making a logo for the game. It is very simple, but I wanted to have a little something to be on top of the play button when you boot up the game. Once the logo was finished, I added a couple of buttons and then I made a main menu scene, with the play button opening the game and the quit button just quitting the game. The other menu that I did was a very, very simple game over screen that plays when the player is defeated. This game over screen has a very, very simple animation to kind of smoothly fade in once the player loses, something that I quickly did using the animation tracks of the UMG system for Unreal. The last thing we need now is some sound effects for potions and the music of the game. Here is what Growing Zorg used to sound like on the original release. And here is what the Growing Zorg remake is sounding like. For these soundtracks, I used a website called Ecret, which generates music from an AI. You basically have a unique piece of music with just a click of a button. And if you don't like the music, you can just generate it again. And then these soundtracks can be used on your games, on your YouTube channel, anywhere you want, commercially or not. You can also change the type of song that you want by choosing a couple of different presets, as well as change the instruments or some stuff on the composition after the song is generated. It's honestly pretty great. For the sound effects, I used a website called SoundSnap. And here is what the final game is looking like. If you want, you can download the game, the link is going to be down in the pinned comment. I was finally able to compile a game in Unreal 5. Also, be sure to check out SparkMuts, my indie game on Steam. I also have a YouTube devlog series about it, so subscribe if you enjoy game dev content. Check out the Discord server too and become a part of the community. I'm Leo, signing off.